my heart belongs to quilting. So this section um, really is about, you know, Doreen's heart. Um, and hey, um, Emily, they're saying they can't see the quilt. So can you make sure to pin the big one? Um, well then, sorry guys. Can you guys see it now? Yeah, we we're good. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Thanks for letting me know. Um, this is a little new for us. So, so yeah. So if you, Devin, if you want to stand back and show them, um, my heart, my heart belongs to quilting. So that's the top above um, the baby quilt. So that's how we open the show and it really it really is about you know what Doreen loved. She loved quilting and obviously her family. Um, if you we also if you should you can see the scrapbooks um, sort of in this case and in a couple of other cases um, throughout the exhibition we have these scrapbooks and we've tried to open them to pages that have you know, significance to her. So there's one of a picture of her dancing. Um, there's a um, a scrapbook from France. Um, I think in that, in the scrapbook on the left is uh, one of her holding Peaky and Spike. Um, let's see. Yeah, oh, not holding, but there is a picture of Peaky and Spike. Um, and some, it looks like a very lavish buffet. Gracious spread, yes. <laughs> and then that's her top. And then Peaky and Spike is actually the block. Uh, if you go back, Devin, the, the blue triangle that surrounds the, the mauve one. So on the far other wall, the opposite wall, uh, this section is um, dedicated to quilts by her friends. Um, so this is a portrait of Doreen dancing. She was known um, for her dancing and her Birkenstocks. This one's by Ruth McDowell. Um, and we have, a, Megan has a picture that it seems like this quilt is likely based on. Um, so she'll show that later. And, and then in the case, there are two quilts by Mary Story um, of their travels, uh, of their travels. I'm trying to read what, yeah, hey. Oh. This beats winter, winter in Wisconsin. <laughs> and then a picture of her dancing in the scrapbook. Um, and I just want to share in an article in the American Quilter magazine after Doreen's passing, Liz Porter wrote, we have a joke in the quilt world that the one who dies with the most fabric wins. I don't know if Doreen won that one, but she must have won for having the most Birkenstocks. And she definitely won for, with the most friends, was the one with the most friends, which is really, really wonderful. She was really a beloved person. Um, on the other wall, when you walk in, you'll see another top. So the one, yeah. Uh, this is a top with her using her French fabric line. Um, Doreen was commissioned to create a fabric line, which she modeled after the traditional Provence fabrics and colors. Um, as Mary, Marianne Fons recalls, one of her colleagues, tops were useful for itinerant quilting and structures because they were easy to fold up and put in one suitcase. So we have a couple of these tops throughout. I really love this one. I think it's beautiful. 
Yeah, that one is actually with um, fabric from Provence, from France. It was before her her line. Oh. So this is actually French fabric. Oh, Sorry. nice. Thank you. And then on the opposite wall of that one, from that one, we have um, Elsie's heart. Uh, so I paired the heart, the, the hearts with together. Um, Doreen was a Wisconsin native, um, and she was definitely an embracer of the dairy state. Uh, she collected cow figurines and other memorabilia, as well as um, high contrast black and white prints. I see a couple of hands raised. If you have questions or want to make a comment, you can use the chat feature at the bottom of the screen. So that's our atrium. And now Devin is walking through um, our gift shop to get to our main gallery. And this is the beginning of the show. Uh, let's start with the, the first, the title quote, Devin. Thank you. Okay, so the title wall quilt is called Running Hot and Cold, um, and you can definitely see that in the composition with the icy um, blues and contrasting with the bold reds and oranges. Um, as Doreen remarked, this quilt is effective because the cool squares keep marching through the warm area and the warm squares radiate through the cool area. Uh, one of the words I would use to describe Doreen's quilts is electric. Um, they kind of vibrate. Um, on, Either side of Running Hot and Cold are two smaller quilts from her travels, um, Playa del Carmen on the left and St. Thomas Spinning Fish um, on the right. <laughs> uh, as I mentioned with the tops, the same was true for smaller quilts. Smaller quilts she could take on her travels, um, she could bring on her quilt cruises. And you can see she's really playing with a small number of geometric shapes. Um, in this one, um, she is mostly using peaky and spike units. Um, you can see that in the tail yep, of the fish. Okay, and then we can pan around to the left. So we'll focus on those two quilts. I love these two together. Um, so Doreen was an avowed fabricaholic. Um, she visited quilt shops throughout her travels and was constantly feeding her fabric stash. Um, she spoke once of doing some weeding out in the closet that uh, held her impressive fabric collection. It was like trying to remove sand from the beach with a teaspoon, she said. And quilts like the one on the right, um, Go Fish Basimatic, um, she really let the novelty fabric do most of the work for this quilt. Um, you can see the fishes. And I decided to pair this one with the Peaky and Spike and Friends, which uses a very similar pattern on block structure to show how Doreen's fabrics um, did the talking. You know, they really drive the uniqueness of each quilt in some ways. And Jeannie Crichton chimed in, this fish quilt was from a cruise in 1992. And throughout the exhibition, we've really tried to um, 
sometimes we put scrim or like temporary walls up, um, but in this exhibition, we really wanted you to be able to see the backs of the quilts alongside the quilts because they're, some of her fabrics are just really special, <laughs> including the back. Um, there's some really awesome, I think it's Marameco fabric on, an, on one across the way. Um, but this fish fabric is really great. <laughs> Um, and the, I mean, the polka dots are really awesome too, right behind it. Um, so we, you know, we really wanted you to be able to look. Those are the poppies from Hawaii. And she really, I mean, she, it was, most of these quilts are signed. Most of them have slat, slant, slat sleeves and Seems like she, you know, they were really ready for display. Okay, do we want to go to keep going to your left, Devin, over um, when you first walk in? So again, we have two very colorful works here and we can talk about color and fabric. Um, the one on the left is Magpie Roadkill. And the one on the right is titled um, Cross Street Pasture. Um, she lived on Cross Street in Madison uh, with husband Pete and daughter Megan for many years. Um, as Marianne Fons recalls, to my knowledge, Doreen was the first person to use the word audition when trying out fabrics. I remember an exercise she used when narrowing down the choices. She would pick up one of the fabrics, hide it behind her back and ask, do we miss it? Then she'd return it to the grouping and ask, are we glad it's back? Um, and you can really see, you know, she just, she was just really playing. Uh, in Doreen's book, she advocated for the use of a design wall, as well as encouraging quilters to map out their quilt on graph paper. Uh, in Pattern Play, she provides detailed instructions on how to set up a design wall, and she is probably one of the first to instruct quilters to design new templates on the computer using a graphic program, Simple Grid Pattern. And I think, you know, given the current intersection of fiber arts and technology, um, this recommendation seems pretty ahead of her time. And there she's using again the black and white with the bold colors. So as we come around this way, um, we're going to spend some time on the one on the left. Uh, so this one's called July, um, and Doreen used quilts similar to those she used in a series in her series of pieced hearts in the first, um, the first in the atrium. Um, to create the impression of curves. Uh, as many quilters will tell you, curves are some of the most difficult parts of the quilt to replicate. Fort Doreen was a, was a master of creating the illusion of curves without sewing a single curve seam, making units appear to overlap by clever flat fabric placement and large scale unifying fabrics. And again, there's just something very electric about her choice, her choices. So in the, in the far bay to the right, we've really focused on her travel quilts. Um, so this is Ketchikan, which was the first quilt Doreen made inspired by her journeys to Alaska. Uh, in the intro to the quilt in Travels with Peaky and Spike, she wrote, I had toyed with the idea of working with totem pole imagery but I found I just didn't know enough about them to do the subject justice. I think the idea, the idea had an influence on the shape of this quilt though. The breakthrough was when I came up with the first whale design, though my Alaskan friends say it more closely resembles halibut. <laughs> I think it looks like a whale. <laughs> Okay. 
And you can see she uses whales on the in the quilt on the left as well. And this is also a really great fabric. Oh, maybe not. Sorry, I was thinking of another one. Trees. And then this is um, the quilt I showed in my PowerPoint with Peaky and Spike in their rowboat. With a fish. <laughs> she made several fish quilts. Um, I think she really enjoyed Enjoyed that form. Okay. And then those are the two quilts from Hawaii. The one on the right is Hawaiian spinning stars and the one on the left is Hawaiian nosegays. Um, she mostly taught classes on kawaii and found that large scale poppy um, fabric that we saw, I think is in the back, <clears throat> in a quilt shop on the island. And then this one's Hawaiian nosegays. I love this one. She did a lot of hand sewing um, or she worked with friends to have them quilted, but a lot of them are okay, so as you as you go around this way, <clears throat> so we'll start with the one all the way on the right. Um, we have two flower inspired quilts. This one um, is called Night Blooms in Nassau. Um, and then the one on the far left is called Wallflowers. Um, and she loved um, utilizing the Peaky and Spike patchwork units to create these, what she called her lily quilts, uh, as we see in this one. And then the one at the center is called Flashback. Um, she, uh, Marian Bonsa said that she, it seems like she's inspired by, she, you know, she grew up in, she was a hippie. She grew up in the 60s and she had, um, you know, these really psychedelic colors. <laughs> um, This, Megan says this is her personal favorite. This is a lovely one. It's really quite beautiful. Yeah, and then that's another 
it's called Wallflowers. Again, just peeking spike. She's playing with. Okay, so I think I'm going to talk about the one St. Elsewhere, which is in the Central Bay. That one. Yeah, so we have um, St. Elsewhere and Ambrosia. Um, Ambrosia is the one if you pan all the way to the right, Devin. Yeah, and you can see we've also included a portrait of Doreen and um, her books. So among the various setting arrangements Doreen covered in pattern play um, were block to block, her favorite, directional block to block, alternate block, and settings with strips as in ambrosia. So if we can go to ambrosia first. Um, of this quilt she wrote, I hadn't plan to use setting strips at all. Size, making the quilt bigger wasn't a problem because the quilt top with blocks alone would have been 60 by 80 inches. But when the corners of four blocks came together, there was just a big white blob. Simple narrow satching divided the blocks enough to separate the corners. So she's just using sashing to divide those blocks. So St. Elsewhere, the other quilt, um, is one of the small projects Doreen included um, instructions for in pattern play, even though the purpose of her book was to teach students how to design their own. And however, she wrote, by watching me lay out a project, you can follow my thought processes for a specific quilt and adapt those methods to your own piece. You may in fact want to start with one of my designs just to get used to the game. This is another really wonderful quote. Um, across from St. El Elsewhere, we have um, another square quilt um, called Fond Memories of a Granny Square. Among Doreen's favorite traditional quilt blocks was the card trick. Um, in fond memory, she surrounded the central card trick block with borders made up of the same simple patchwork unit that is combined with half square triangles, the half square triangles in the classic block. As I said before, Doreen um, deconstructed traditional quilt blocks, redesigning them with catchy names like Peaky and Spike, winning me things, and made them user friendly. The two quilts that flank fond memories of a granny square are called American Pie 1 and 2. Again, we're trying to show the backs of the quilts as well as the fronts. <clears throat> and I just love these two. Um, there's just something really magnetic about them and the way that she's sort of created this sense of depth. Um, using lights and darks. And I think, I think, yeah, that was nice. And I don't know, Megan, you might know, is that Miramecco fabric on the left over there? Oh, definitely. The pink fabric. The backing of that of, of Night Blooms in NASA. And then this is American Pie 2 or American Pie 1.
It's more muted. I think I'm gonna keep going. Devin, do you think we could go to the next day? And then I think just we're gonna start um, in the far corner. So these ones are probably one of her more well-known ones. Barb, we have barbed wire on the left and a peaking spike with night and noon, night and moon on the right. Um, night and noon. Um, so barbed wire is on the cover of Pattern Play. And she's again using this windmill pattern and just really playing with curves um, without, you know, stitching the curve. This one also appeared in Pattern Play, and she uses it as an example of a, of a block to block setting. Um, she included a page of line drawings showing four of the star blocks set two by two, some shaded with some, some with pinwheel units at the center, some plain. So kind of like the pinwheel units in, in barbed wire. Um, and she said, look at the plain black and white line drawings she advised. Then at the shaded versions, make a copy and color some for yourself. Look for the new designs created at block sides and corners. Are there any new design elements visible in the all over drawing that are not evident in the single block? Can you do something with the background to add depth? I try to think of what would be predictable and then I do something different. So she's really, you know, she really is playing within the traditions, but also totally reinventing them. I think that's, that's really what makes a lot of this work very special. Um, in the case, we have uh, an example. She has a template, some templates that she produced. Yeah. And then we also have uh, the scrapbook pulled open to a picture of the cups that were probably an inspiration for the cups in that, in the top above. So she saw the cups, looks like that was in France. And there's some cups. Again, this is one, these are, this is one of her tops. And then this one seemed kind of like an oddball, but I, I really like it. <laughs> I can see Megan's face. Um, it reminds me of, uh, it's really old, she says, um, but it's just, it's kind of deco looking, They're, like the colors and the the geometry of the flowers. So I, I quite like this one. Okay, and then if we want to just, these are some more smaller quilts. And then obviously that, that one is quite large. This one, the one on the right is funny. It's got like a, like a bear or something in there. Yeah, seems very Wisconsin. The 
Someone asked, does the bear have a fish? I, I don't recall, so Devin, you'll have to look. Looks like that's the paw. <laughs> And this is, is this another old one? I couldn't, it's hard for me to date. I can't believe she would actually do a, a nine patch. I think that might be a Blanche quilt that she gave to her, or from Blanche <laughs> Young. I don't think yeah. it's hers though. Okay, well that's good to know. I'm not, yeah, she, would, she wouldn't have. I, I, it I, didn't look like be Blanche. Yeah. It looks like a Blanche quilt too, I think. Someone says so muted compared to the others. Devin, do you want to just scroll around so people can see the full gallery? So I think what makes, I mean, there's a lot of things about her person that make her really special, but I think she really provided a model for how to like make your living from your craft. Um, and she provided these tools for women, you know, her books and her templates. So she really encouraged people to like stretch their quilting and to have the confidence to take risks. Um, and so I think that's really what what I take away from this exhibition and just, it's just, it's really moving. Um, and I'm really grateful to have been able to work on it. And I feel like, you know, we've also gotten to know Iowa and Megan through this exhibition and that's just been really, really special. Um, And it's, it's, they're beautiful. <laughs> they really are. Um, so now I think maybe we should ask Megan to step in and she's going to share some photographs of her mom and some memories. Okay, I'm unmuted. I'm a little nervous. I know I sound a lot like my mom, which could freak some people out. Um, and hopefully I won't get teary eyed and verklempt, but you can just talk amongst yourself if that happens. So let's see here. I scanned in and dug through a bunch of pictures yesterday because I'm a last minute kind of kind of gal. And this is Doreen as a little baby. She was born on October 18th in 1950, which always made it easy to figure out how old she was. Hey Megan, do you want to try doing your slide view? Let's see here. Is it not working? Let's see here. Oops. What did I do before? Yeah. Crap. Here, let me, let me try again. I am not technically uh, good here. All right, share screen. Basic. Oh, here we go. Here, does that work? Yes, we're good. Hey, <laughs> my eight-year-old figured it out for me. Thanks, Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. So here she is as a little baby. How cute. So I wanted to do a little early history, but yeah, she she was. How come now it won't keep going though? Oh, here. There we go. So there she was, the oldest of six. 
I can't do it fast enough. David and Doris had Doreen, Dennis, Dwight, Debbie, Diana, and Doug. They really like these. So, but yeah, there she is. Here she is in high school. Aww. Aww. And here are her first two children, Dudley and Heidi, Basset Hounds. I love the, I think that's Dolly Parton, perhaps, in the right upper corner there. Um, and I also love that, oh, they just look so cute. And that lat, I'm sure she latch hooked that rug herself because she did any, if it had fiber, she, you know, she was a master embroiderer, knitter. She could knit and watch TV or read a book. She was kind of good at everything she did. So those were her first two children. And as there I am with my baby quilt, as a little eeny weeny with Silky. And here she is. She started out doing more, you know, pillows, little craftsy fun stuff in her little kit when I was a little kid. Um, she always wished she had curly hair, which was, I never quite got it because it was really, really hard to make our hair straight. And people pay a lot of money to have hair as straight as ours these days. But no, I thought this was a really cute one. And here we are with Silky and our matching blue dresses. I think it might have gotten zoomed out. So if you could. Oh, it did? Did it? Yeah, sorry. Did it work again or no? Can you see it? Cutting it off. Ah, I am. Um, now, should I do it? Oh, here, let me go out again. Sorry. Oh, oh now it's super zoomed in here. Oh, shoot. There we go. Yeah? No? Oh, Does it work? Perfect. Yay. And here is Madison, Wisconsin, our 3118 Cross Street, the house that I think we moved into when I was before. So I don't really remember living anywhere else. She loved that house. And I'll be honest, both of my parents' ashes are in that backyard. Um, it's more fun to go visit than a cemetery. There she is in her favorite chair with, that's actually not Rudy, it's Rudy's mom. Um, but ruffles, but she sat in that chair and loved watching PBS and quilting. Our dining room, I have a, these are just a couple fun pictures from around our house, like growing up on the phone. The sewing room, which was tiny. I've seen other people have these big giant quilt studios, her friends, but she had this teeny tiny little room, but she made it work. The cat and her Foff, she was so excited that Foff asked her if they could send her a sewing machine and then they would send her a new one every two years or so. But yeah, there's Teddy. Her fabric, now these shelves are actually, I have, they're like two feet deep or maybe even deeper because there's fabric behind that fabric. Our living room during Christmas, she loved Christmas. She made the Santa, she, look, American Girl dolls, half those ornaments I'm sure she made herself. But yeah, no, our house was a winter wonderland. There's the cow tree. We, we have not pictured are probably three other trees. I know magic we had, it was really a, a wonderful Christmas. Like it was her biggest stretch of time that she was home and she could just make doll clothes. And, cutesy wootsy stuff. She even did like cutesy kit, like kits and stuff that you wouldn't, you know, just for fun. So here we're going to go to the quilting. Seaver, I know she won Paducah, that was the thing, but she, when she met Walter, Walter Schultz, that was, I get reclipped. So I have some, here's some fun pictures from Seaver's. This was her favorite place to teach in the entire universe. Ah, fun, more fun, and a little Walter. Being silly. Here she is with Anne and Blanche Young. Oh, nice. Yeah, Blanche got to, so yeah, Blanche started going up with her. There's some little chicken making at Seavers. Uh, Cinder and Anne, I hope you're watching. And here, I love this picture of Blanche camouflaged in her own quilt, but she was a really, really good friend of my mom's. She also lived seven miles from Disneyland, which I really appreciated. And I probably, I spent, over the, growing up as a kid, I spent at least like two or three months staying at her house. Um, I came to California a lot. There, oh, there she is in front of her house. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the best quotes. After my mom died, I think Paducah did a, a show 
kind of commemorating. And these are the, I broke the only rule. You can't sew in the nude. I actually think it seems like it could be kind of fun, but um, I can't really read all of these. So I kind of, I zoomed in and wrote some of them down. The color theory we, we, we have, if you take it away, do you miss it? If you put it back, are you happy to see it? Regarding the quilt size, I just make them till they're done. I don't have to use one. Trust your intuitive sense of color. It starts before the mind starts working. Unnecessary or overdone quilt design. Their fabric is like spots on a rooster. When my machine doesn't work, I just put my hand on it and say heal. I used to have to visualize parking spots as well. Um, in quilting, it's not done. It's not the done, but the doing. I'm not verbal in the morning, which is true. She also did not function without her bra. I often had to be like, put your bra on, mom, because you're not, you're not making sense. And it, it did the, <laughs> it did the trick. Um, simple is good, and I have mastered deviant behavior. I don't know. She wasn't very devious. So, no, I just, I just thought this was the funniest. Um, well, you can see with the little peaky and spike and chicken patterns. Here's some pictures of her friends, including Ruth McDowell, who made that beautiful quilt of her, the Sun Sliding Goddess, and Judy Warren. So Judy Warren Bladen, I believe. So. Here's the old school picture I found of Joe Cunningham, Judy Warren, Gwen Marsden, Marianne Fonz, and Barbara Brackman. We don't, no, we're not sure where they are. Nobody remembers, but I just thought it was a cute one. And here she is in Australia for the first time. Back in 89, she was invited to teach down there, which was a pretty big deal. Like, people didn't fly like they do now or before COVID. So this is an, oh, her second favorite place to teach, besides Seavers, and it's sort of the winter Seavers, was Point Benita. Um, it's a YMC camp in the headlands um, across the Golden Gate Bridge from San Francisco. And it looks like they look like they had lots and lots of fun. Here she is. This is I didn't realize she actually put it put um, Kiki and Spike go to Haight Ashbury together from there, which is really cool across the across the way. They used to go get um, drive up to the Charles Schutz um, Schultz Snoopy Museum or what like in Santa Rosa and get giant Snoopy T-shirts. And there is Jeannie Creighton. I think, oh, I can't, is that? I'm not even sure, but they like, this is more Point Bonita, dressing up like goofballs, Peaky and Spike. There she is, one January, I think the Packers were going to the Super, or were at the Super Bowl, and the Super Bowl, that was month there in January. So she had to show her, her team spirit. <laughs> and there she is, just thought, I love this one, just in Marin and the, in the headlands in her cow <laughs> yeah, it, pretty and there she is with the golden gate bridge and there she is with her dress tucked in her underwear i think this is either the vermont quilt festival because it was oftentimes freakishly hot um or um in new york casnovia which she always loved to teach at but one or and this was a normal like this is not the only time she's ever done that and here we, this is her in Asilomar in 1990 with a giant cow necklace and actually a wonderful outfit made out of Carol Gresco's fabric from up in Door County. And here we have, I don't even know where this is, but I just thought it was cute. So in 1989, I believe, Georgia Bonesteel asked my mom to go on one of her quilting cruises. And that's where she met George Shy, who was the tour operator, the travel agent that put them together. And George liked my mom so much, she's like, you should do your own cruise. So they, they did, she, they also, Barbara came on and was another one of the fun um, part of the tour operators. We love Barbara. This is my mom and her in Hawaii. So this is a cruise. My mom and, yes, I was continue. I was pretty much always embarrassed as a child. They dressed up like Sun Bonnet Sioux, and I forget the, this is going on a cruise, the tropical version for the um, costume competition. Here's everybody all dressed up. It's probably formal night. I think there's Mary Story. I'm not sure who, who the other folks are. 
Um, but no, she wasn't so sure about cruising at first, but you know, any excuse to get a bunch of people who love fabric together and sew is so fun. She had so much fun. She also was a big avid um, swimmer and snorkeler and obviously smoker. There's a lot of pictures of that. Bad, bad, bad. Here she is, I think, kind of in the back of the bus. There's always the back of the bus. Once, so we did the cruises, and then George was like, hey, you want to go to England? We should do a tour there. It filled up so fast that we actually did two in a row. I had to go to Stonehenge twice in three weeks, but it was okay. But no, the bus tours were really fun, and people, it was just so fun. People followed her all over the world. We had women, oh, Nancy Farmer went everywhere. We had, so, there were some ladies that they were anywhere my mom would go, they would sign up and go with. Here she is in Australia. This is uh, Phillip Island, I think. That's where the little tiny penguins live. Peaky and Spike. Here she, I just thought this was a fun one with George. They're on some sort of hayride in the outback. Checking out the cockatoos. Alaska, and then this is sort of disjointed. It's like Alaska. Now she's in Norway. Oh, look, we're back in Alaska. That's me and Judy Dales and Andy, my friend Joanne. She got to go on trips. My friends got to go on trips too, which was kind of fun as a kid and being an only child. And here she is in Hawaii with Susan Kinky. Um, they actually brought, shipped this surfboard back just for me, which was really, really sweet. But she, this was a friend she made, made when she first went out there and taught at the Kapaya Stitchery, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. But this is where, too, she got some of the, fab the fabric for those the Hawaiian quilts that you guys saw. So oh, yeah. I, I've heard it's pretty, like, uh, everybody knows about it. Um, and then she brought a whole other tour back of ladies. She did a, for her Hawaiian, her Hawaiian tour. I think that's Nancy Farm right there. So here's some more pictures. She went, oh, she went, so I didn't get to go everywhere, but she, I did get to go on a bunch of her tours. Um, here she is in France on the back of the bus with her goofy glasses. I just thought that was a cute one. Prov this is where they actually toured a factory in Provence where they made the, where they make Provence fabric, which inspired her for her own. Monet's garden. I think France, but I'm not 100% sure. I think this, that she is in Ireland here, but I don't, I don't know. It kind of looks, it could be England though too. Could sometimes the green mountainous coasts look similar, but I just thought it was a cool one. And there she is, or there are Peaky and Spike having their romantic moment. So these are, you know, after my mom died, a wonderful woman in Ireland sent me some pictures. I think these are take were taken the day she died, so she died at night. And there she is, way back there. And one more. I did. I actually have a picture, like the last picture ever taken of her, but it's not very cute. So. And there she is, electric sliding, which I love. Like I'm pretty sure that. I have a couple pictures that are of this and I'm pretty sure that the, I have no idea where it is, but it looks like these are the ones Ruth used. And then at the very, very end, here is my mom and Paul Pilgrim in a syllabar. And she's flipping us off again. I have no idea why, but this picture just cracked me up. And I, he actually died two years before my mom. And she always said that Paul would be waiting with like good feather pillows and quality um, bedding for when she died so she was she knew she would meet Paul so that's all I got for you there I did actually um I did actually hey, let me get a I have a I put all these pictures on Flickr so you guys can people can go back and look at them I'll post the link here in just a sec thank you Megan but yeah it's been wonderful thank you um so why don't we open it up for questions or comments? I, I can read through the chat and kind of try to, let's see. Yeah. Um. Oops. Okay. Yeah, so Peg Larson says she was a really fun teacher, so accepting of individual preferences. 
Um, Maureen Tempest said, would love to know her thinking process. What a treat being in a class with her, being in a class with her would be. Nice, nice job. Yeah. Um, I have yeah. a feeling your mom was quite a character. Oh, she was, she was. We, I got, I got letters from like, when, my, when she died, like the credit union, I got cards from like every business in Madison. People that like not, this was not, that didn't even know her as like a quilter. Like, ever, like she was really one of the, she was a character and one of the funniest people I've ever, I, I actually did actually make me pee my pants more than once. Like. <laughs> Like, and then she's like, oh my gosh, you're like a dog. I have to, <laughs> but it's like, don't make me laugh so hard, mom. Um, Joe Cunningham says she was also extremely serious about her work, as you can see, while never taking herself <laughs> too seriously. Yeah. Um, Marion Fawn says that was fabulous, Megan. Thank you. Aw, um, Debbie. My mother-in-law says these are the most imaginative, colorful quilts I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Claire. <laughs> oh, my Aunt Jeannie. Hey. <laughs> um, there's a question for you. Do you quilt, Megan? Ooh, the famous one. Like that. <laughs> that was a. I was kind. Of, I do not. I um. I do. I'm actually a really. I got into plants, as you can kind of see. I. She was not a great gardener. My dad was more of a plant guy and more of a gardener, but um, I don't, I actually did just buy a thing to make some weird latch hook things and I can embroider and that kind of stuff. I like to paint and I can, you know, I do like color and being creative, but no quilts. And I like, I love beads and all of that stuff. I think I read too, someone wants to know where these quilts live um, when they're not there. and. For the past 20 something years, they've lived with Jerry, Gerald Roy um, in Connecticut, but I will, I have a whole bunch of them here in California. I live in Davis. Um, I just moved here in October from, I lived in San Francisco for 12 years. Um, and now they're going to come, some of them are going to go home and then we're going to figure out what to do. I think this, um, Houston was going to have a, they were actually going to bring the quilts in until COVID canceled it. And they're hoping that next year, well, there'll be a show of her quilts at Houston. So I'm excited about that. I see a lot, couple of Speckmans, Catherine Speckman. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you all. Thank you for joining us. Um, if you have any questions, we'll hang out a little bit longer and um, we can always go through the gallery too again if that's of interest but uh it's five o'clock so someone says this made me so happy and a little sad at the same time Aww. being your neighbor was such a happy time for me oh we miss you suzanne like suzanne had all the cool stuff actually she had all the beads and she made clothes so i would hang out and do embroidery and cool things at her house she lived across the playground from our literally like less than a block away. So, aw. Lyric Dowd says, this was so inspiring. Thanks so much. Zach says, thanks for sharing. Thank you. Love your mom. Bob Lee. Bob Lee. Yeah. Aw. Catherine Speckman says, this was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> aw. Um. Aw. So, no, and she would have loved that it's in that, in a barn with the, with the whole cows and barns and farms. <laughs> like she would have, she would have flipped out. Like it looks, it looks so good. You guys did a really amazing job. Thank you. Yeah. I really Thank enjoyed you. it. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, yeah, I'll just let it kind of dwindle down and. Yeah. Aww. Um, I can, sh I can save the chat, Megan, so you can oh, see. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. Um. Uh, <laughs> oh, point Benita people. Oh, so cutting outside. <laughs> oh, hey, Joe, let's go catch a mess of bullheads and play some euchre. My, she was also a, an excellent card player. She played bridge. She played she said She played. I was. I was more of a canasta, like hearts girl myself. Oh, hey, do you want to come? 
which also this is Zoe. Hi Zoe. My daughter. <laughs> Love your crown, Zoe. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Me and Dad are having a party. Oh. Having a party? Oh. <laughs> We're also watching. Yeah. Oh. Korean taught the first class I ever took. I remember the cow necklace. <laughs> oh, she had excellent jewelry. She had really, really cool, like crazy, crazy stuff. I saw the cow earrings too. A couple of yeah, times. well, her friend Karen Curry would make her. Oh, here. Here. Oh, Here's I keep this one. She made these amazing, like she actually did a portrait of my mom, which is out of wood. Um, but yeah, Karen Curry, like, but yeah, you have to have a fairly, I don't know, it might look a little funny on me, but it was, <laughs> yeah, I know she made these just amazing woodcut um, things. Yeah, those are, that's beautiful. Okay, well, I'm going to save the chat. Um, okay. Melissa, are you recording, Melissa? Yes. I assume so. Okay. Um, I have been, yes. Okay, good. So this, if for anyone who's hanging around, um, we're gonna post this on our Zoom, or on our, sorry, on our YouTube page. Um, and so it should be up probably by tomorrow or Monday. Um, so you'll be able to see it. Yay. Yeah. Oh, the guinea pig, my cat. Oh, was it black? I think I do remember that guinea pig. I love, my mom was also a big fan of guinea pigs and I had a rodent tower. She let me get, I was like, I had hamsters, I had bunnies, I had. Oh, wow. I had guinea pigs, I love guinea pigs. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I think, I think. Yeah, if anyone has any other questions too. I think we'll probably sign okay. off. All right, Yay. thank you, Megan. Well, nice thanks. You. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. See you later. <laughs>